learning the basics is extremely important with ninjutsu. Taijutsu, which every ninja must follow, begins with the individual learning to move like the wind. By becoming one with nature, the student of ninjutsu learns to not only attack, but defend oneself. careful attention as we repeat the sequence. basic exercises. With every martial art, the most important limbs are the legs. Every ninja must perform daily exercises to keep the legs flexible and nimble. In this particular exercise, remember to keep the legs and the entire body flexible. Try to relax and spread the legs apart as much as possible. Remember to keep the upper torso straight so that the head does not touch the ground first. The purpose of this exercise is to loosen the muscles and joints around the hips and thighs. In this exercise, slowly tilt the upper torso backwards. Try to keep the back as straight as possible and stretch the stomach muscles. This particular exercise loosens the muscles around the thighs as well as the stomach and back muscles. Taijutsu enables an individual to not only defend oneself but at the same time attack as well. In this maneuver, an attack is dodged by rolling forward. In this forward roll, only one hand is used. It is important that the roll is executed smoothly. Try to curl in as much as possible and make the least amount of sound during the roll. This maneuver should be executed with the least amount of effort without placing body weight on the hand. By deftly maneuvering the palm of the hand, the direction of the roll can be controlled. The student 
student of Taijutsu should practice rolling not just forward, but in all sorts of directions. With this maneuver, the ninja is able to grasp the weapon while executing the roll because the hands are free. Maintaining proper balance is the key to this maneuver. In this next move, the ninja rolls over an obstacle without coming in contact with it. Notice how he does not jump and roll high over his partner. The roll should be executed just barely above the obstacle. Let's take another look. This fold roll is called Kiken. Notice how the ninja has immediately assumed a stance that enables him to attack as well as defend. This next move is called Kuten. Here again, the ninja is able to assume a variety of defensive and offensive positions after completing the roll. This next move is called Shinken Tai Henjitsu. As you can see, this roll is a method for dodging a katana blow. Notice how the ninja rolls away to avoid the blow. In this variation, the ninja rolls backwards. Let's watch this particular move once again. Always remember to assume the proper stance once the roll is completed. In this way, the ninja can attack with shuriken or blinders. important to always remain in constant motion, ready for any move the opponent may take. This move is called Shinken Tobi. Notice how the ninja jumps just barely over the swing of the katana. The height of the jump should correspond with the angle of the swing. This move is called Hapo Hicho Tobi. Here again, the ninja does not jump more than necessary. Notice how the ninja makes only the necessary moves at a calculated distance from the opponent. The ninja assumes a defensive position according to the mode of attack. In this maneuver, the katana blow is dodged as in Shinken Tai Henjutsu. However, when the opponent raises a katana for a second attack, the ninja steps in and strikes the opponent's torso with his hand. This form of walking sideways is an integral part of Taijutsu. Yoko Aruki allows the ninja a wide range of visibility, front and sideways. By slightly changing the pace of the walk, the ninja can also see backwards. Here, all three are moving in the same direction. However, notice how they are all looking in different directions at all times. As a team, these ninjas are able to have complete visibility in all directions. The first one looks in the front direction, the second one in the side directions, and the last one in the backward direction. This maneuver is called Saguri Aruki. 
used to move along the dark or where there are hidden traps or obstacles. Notice how the fingertips are feeling the path. At the same time, the feet are also used to feel the way. Next maneuver is called Shoten no Jitsu. This is also a form of Taijutsu. Notice how the ninja rolls as he lands to lessen the impact. Now let's take a look at some offensive and defensive stances. No kamae. This stance allows the ninja to divert a variety of attacks with his right hand as well as throw blinders. Also notice how the ninja moves his feet. This stance allows the ninja to quickly assume the next necessary move according to the actions of the opponent. Jumonji no Kamae. Notice how the hands are used to parry and deliver blows. The entire body is used to inflict a blow upon the opponent. The deft maneuvering of body weight magnifies the intensity of the blow. Here, the left hand is moved through a series of motions to parry and dodge the opponent's kick, which is then followed by a counter strike. Parry, dodge, and strike. This is one of the sanshin or three stage stances. The hoko no kamae. All maneuvers delivered from this stance are executed in a one, two, three motion. One, two, three, then strike. The movements have to be executed fluidly. Let us cover the eight basic receiving stances. In Omote Gyakutori, the attacking hand is grasped on the outside and twisted outward. The hand is then flipped to the side, throwing the opponent and forcing the arm joints. The hand should be raised as high as possible, making it easier to throw the opponent. and can also be added to assist in the twisting. Now watch the maneuver closely. If it proves difficult to throw the opponent, step into the opponent with a left leg and use it as a throwing pivot. Once the opponent is on the ground, the wrist joint is pinned. Now let's watch the entire sequence once again. Here's a variation on Omote Gyakutori, which can be used when attacking to the outside is not possible. The wrist is twisted to the inside while the elbow is forced.
the opponent's foot can also be pinned by stepping on it with a white foot, preventing the opponent from escaping. Attacking to the outside is not succeeding here. Therefore, step back into the opponent and pin his legs. Without trying to throw him, force his arm down while twisting his wrist. This type of hold is very effective since extreme force is applied to the joints. Now let's try it once again. Since attacking to the outside doesn't work, twist the wrist and force the elbow. The opponent should not be thrown forward but pinned in position so that he cannot escape. The opponent will fall to the ground. Once the opponent is on the ground, other joints or the neck can be pinned. The opponent's body can also be pinned, but in any case, the legs should be used to pin the opponent. The opponent's body itself can also be used for extra leverage. For example, the opponent's left knee is being used to force his right arm. Here is another variation on omote gyakutori. When an opponent attacks with a knife, omote gyakutori can be used to throw the opponent effectively. Once the opponent is on the ground, the knife can be taken away, and the wrist can be pinned as well. Grasp the knife from the side that isn't sharp and pull it free from the opponent's hand while applying pressure on the wrist. This is Uragyakutori, also one of the eight basic stances. Attacking hand is twisted to the inside, forced inward, and upward. The elbow is then grabbed and pulled down to the outside. Throwing the opponent. Once the opponent is on the ground, give his hand a final strong twist. This is a variation of Uragyakutori. In this case, the opponent is armed with a weapon called Shiko. The weapon is used against the opponent. The thief of Shiko in the hands of the inexperienced user can have a damaging effect on the user himself. For the ninja, fighting without a weapon can prove more effective than fighting with one at times. This is another pattern of Uragyakutori. Notice how the Shiko is removed from the hand of the user and impaled into the attacker's arm. The attacker is now completely immobilized and the arm is seriously injured. Unless a student of ninjutsu has mastered taijutsu, the use of weapons can be fatal not to the opponent, but to the user himself. This 
is called musodori. Notice how the ninja moves into the opponent when grabbed. body rather than the hands locks the opponent's arm. The key point of this maneuver is to step in when the opponent backs away. Notice how the left knee breaks the opponent's ribs. It is important that the student of ninjutsu understands that taijutsu is most effective when used successively and in variation. There are many variations of ganseki nage. This is the most basic form. Grab the opponent's left hand and pull in. Next, move into the opponent and throw him with the entire body. Notice how the hips are not used in the throw. Let's look at it once again. Notice how the ninja's feet restrict the opponent's movement. Now that the opponent cannot escape, he can be easily thrown by sweeping his left leg. The opponent's head can also be crushed with a fall. In Ganseki Otoshi, the opponent's left leg is swept out, causing the opponent to fall forward onto his hands. Notice how his left arm is twisted and pulled back. It is firmly gripped while it is slightly propped. Then the back of his right hand is struck with a solid blow. This maneuver is particularly effective for rendering the hand useless. This is the Ganseki Kiri. If the Ganseki Otoshi doesn't prove effective, kick his chin straight up, then step in front of him and throw him. Let's take a look once again. how the leg is used for balance, as well as for attack. Now let's see how the Ganseki Naga can be used against an assailant with a sword. This is called Ganseki Shoto Otori. First, grab the assailant's arm with a sword. Next, twist the wrist. Third, throw him with Ganseki Nage. Once the opponent is down, twist his wrist with the sword. Bring it to his neck and drive the blade into the opponent's throat. Shinzuki. This is a specialized punch that makes use of the arm's pendulum motion. In some ways, it is more effective than simply punching out straight forward. 
notice that the blow is delivered with the entire body. It is somewhat like throwing an object underhand when striking the opponent. The superior feature of Sashizuki is that it has a number of permutations that can be applied when the opponent is striking out with a punch. By trapping the opponent's left hand between the neck and the collarbone, the vulnerable areas, such as the face, the back of the head, his neck and chin can all be hit. Then knocked over using the entire body. This is just one form of sanshin. In sanshin store, the opponent's blows are parried using the hands and arms, while delivering a series of punches. Note how quickly releasing clasped hands makes a full body blow even more powerful and effective. These moves of clasping hands and releasing them form important blows in Taijutsu. Now let's look at a few examples of Sanshin Shito. blows. Notice how the opponent's blows are parried with both hands. Next, a powerful blow is given to the neck. The neck is next broken, the opponent is taken down, and a final blow is given to the face. This is called Urashito Uchi. Urashito is different from Shuto in the sense that it has a long take back, similar to that of a tennis backhand. Although this form is unconventional, it is nonetheless very effective. Let's take a look at a few examples. variation of Urashito Uchi. It is performed as one smooth flowing motion in which several joints are struck in succession. 
Take note that although the opponent seems to be just pinned to the ground, he is in fact receiving severe blows to various parts of the body. This is called Sanshin Shtotsuki. Here, the thumb is used as a lethal weapon. This blow inflicts the greatest damage when delivered from bottom to up. Now, let's take a look at a few examples of Sanshin Shtotsuki. variation of Sanshin Hitotsuki, a kick is avoided and a fist with a thumb pointing forward is jabbed at the face. The opponent is kicking. In a three-step move, the opponent is felled. As you can see, the opponent could be hit from a number of different directions. This maneuver is the Sanshin Hoko no Keri. This move uses a right hand to distract and pull in the opponent. The opponent is momentarily distracted, kicked and felt. Parry the attack, distract the opponent with right hand motions, and kick. If possible, the kick should be directed at the face. Opponent is distracted with right hand motions and kicked in the face. His arm is hooked and twisted, and the opponent is toppled slowly. As he falls, his right arm is broken with a knee. The important thing to remember is that this is performed in one continuous motion. Again, like other maneuvers, there are a number of variations as shown. Here is a variation of Hokorokiri. The opponent's blow is parried, and a kick is delivered to the face. The key point of this variation is that the finishing blow is delivered when the opponent is down on the ground. Now let's watch closely. move called Hoko no Kaishi. The opponent's kick is parried with a body and arm. A counter kick is then quickly delivered while the opponent is off balance. This is a variation of Hoko no Kaishi. As you can see, the ninja deftly dodges the opponent's kick and spins the opponent off balance with the entire body without the use of hands.
cue of the sheep. The opponent aims a kick which is paired away by hand, knocking him off balance and off his feet. In the same motion, his ribs or thigh bone can be broken with a knee drop. Notice how the ninja rolls over the opponent, increasing the damage already done. This maneuver is called Shikaashi. The opponent's kick is dodged and the opponent is thrown off balance by lightly pushing the opponent's other leg with the knee. In this position, he is helpless against a variety of attacks. His ribs can be broken with a knee drop, or his hand can be shattered and his legs pinned. This technique involves very little strength to pin the opponent. Take a look at Ebitori. The opponent tries to deliver a kick. Grab his heel, twist it, and let go. As the opponent falls to the ground, bring the entire body weight upon his knee and apply pressure to immobilize the opponent. Next, lean forward. Bend and step onto the opponent's left arm while firmly locking the opponent's knee with the other leg. Now both hands are free to deliver a blow to the opponent's head or neck. Jigoku Otoshi a maneuver that not only parries a kick, but actually breaks the opponent's leg. The kick is slapped down, by which the opponent loses his balance. The opponent's leg is then broken by both knees. The entire movement is executed in one swift motion. exists in the mind. It is the ninja that unleashes the hidden power of the ancient masters. The power is there. It is the mind and body that provide the key.